This is a brief presentation about the Jagged Globe expedition to Kun in the Indian Himalaya. This is a view of the, the two 7,000 metre peaks in south on the southern edge of Ladakh moving towards Zanskar. On the right, we have Nun, slightly higher, and on the left, Kun. And uh, this particular expedition is to Kun. This view taken from the north, we are actually going to drive around the, the back and, and approach it from the other side. So although Kun looks quite rocky from this side, the, the way we climb is almost entirely on snow. And for these expeditions, we fly by Delhi up to Leh, the capital of Ladakh. And uh, it's a really interesting and unusual part of the Himalaya uh, in Ladakh is predominantly a Buddhist region in a uh, Hindu country of India. So for those who've been to Tibet, a lot of the architecture is similar. Uh, but for those who haven't, this can often be their, their first experience of, of these types of, of, of Buddhist villages and monasteries. Because it's possible to drive quite high at the beginning of this climb, we find it advantageous to put in a, a three day hike before we move to base camp. So that'll be a three day acclimatization hike where we're camping above 4,000 metres and crossing a pass of up to 5,000 metres. And we find that having done that, it makes the move to base camp uh, much more comfortable and gives a better chance of, of people feeling good when they get to base camp. So it is a one day walk from the road at 3,900 metres to this base camp site at just under 4,500. A pleasant site with grass, uh, which is important on these on these 7000 meter peaks. Some of the base camps are on glacial moraine, which is just a bit less comfortable. Another slightly unusual aspect of this trip is, although it's in India, our support crew of Sherpas who are going to work with us on the mountain are almost always Nepalis. So these will be guys who work on the 8000 meter peaks in Nepal in the, the spring and autumn season. But in the summer, these trips usually happen in the month July, they come to Ladakh uh, uh, and work in the Indian Himalaya. So a very experienced crew on the mountain. <coughs> the route from base camp to camp one is in two quite distinct sections. The first half is walking over rocks and, and jumping across a few rivers in order to get to what we call Crampon Point. So it's a total height gain of about a thousand metres. The first 500 on rocks and then we put the crampons here and the second 500 metres crossing snow, uh, taking maybe five or six hours the first time we do it, but getting down to maybe four and a half uh, as the team get better acclimatised. And the site of Camp One is entirely on snow. So the group are pretty much carrying their personal clothing at this point and our Sherpa team are moving up uh, heavier group equipment, tents and food. And you can see from here in Camp 1, the, the steeper ground, the, the steepest part of this climb is between Camp 1 and Camp 2. And uh, this is mostly equipped with fixed ropes. Quite gentle ground leaving Camp 1. And then as we get higher, it gets uh, steeper up the fixed ropes. Uh, number of teams. This mountain's attempted by four or five groups a year, uh, starting late June and then moving through to late July into August. Now, these may be groups of four or five, so the mountain could be quite quiet. But from time to time, quite large Indian groups, often military, may appear 20, 30 members. Uh, that does provide some extra manpower fixing the ropes. <coughs> but compared to some other 7,000 metre peaks, you could expect an expedition to Nun to be quite quiet in, in terms of other climbers. This is Camp 2 at the start of a long plateau, and you can see the main summit ahead with, with, with some, some mist hanging over the top. So we would do a climb to Camp 2, and then back down to base camp. And then the second time we go up to camp two is the summit push. Uh, the shortest day on the trip is the day where we cross the plateau, very gentle terrain from camp two to camp three. 
uh, shouldn't take more than three hours. And Camp 3, at a height of 6,300 metres, is located just below the summit. Uh, the route goes from the, the tents on the right straight up to the summit ridge and then takes a, a sharp left uh, along the ridge to the top. When researching this mountain, I found there were an awful lot of pictures at and below Camp 2, but not many on the summit day. It does strike me that uh, quite a few teams that come here don't quite have the resources or the organisation to, to make it on the final bit to the top. And although it doesn't look particularly steep, when we were there, uh, the ground was slightly harder than it looks. Um, it was hard ice with about three inches of, of quite soft snow on top. So although not massively steep, it did require good crampon technique to negotiate safely. And our Sherpas fixed over a thousand metres of rope on summit day. Uh, this area of India is quite close to the Pakistan frontier. And this is Nanga Parbat, one of the world's 8,000 metre peaks located just over the border in Pakistan. When you get high up on, uh, on noon, you, you get a view of that. And uh, just approaching the summit on the, on the upper slopes. Fair bit of cloud billowing in the distance, but fortunately we, we had good clear conditions towards the top. And uh, most of the team on the on the summit. Uh, a reasonably long summit day with a, a 1 a.m. start. We joined the ridge at six and a half thousand metres and got to the summit at 11 o'clock in the morning. So in total from our high camp to the summit and back down was a 14 hour day. And that I suppose is not untypical on a 7,000 metre mountain. Uh, and interestingly, because if I saw this photograph, I would think that on a slope of this steepness, fixed rope isn't really necessary. But because of the thin covering of snow on the hard ice, uh, the fixed rope definitely made this uh, a safe ascent. Uh, and without the fixed rope, it, it would have been uh, just mo more hazardous and more stressful. So after a, a, a night to recover at Camp 3, the following day, we're able to make it across the, the quite straightforward plateau, back towards Camp 2 and on down to base camp. And in the, in the short amount of time we'd been on the mountain, uh, snow conditions had changed quite considerably. Uh, the, the rivers, the streams that we'd been able to jump across quite easily on the way up, uh, had risen and we had to wade some of them on the way down. So a final closing view of the mountains, not actually the summit of, of Noon itself. Uh, but so we've got Noon on the left, but you can't quite see Kun. And then a final day of rest and relaxation at the end, visiting some of the, the sites, the monasteries around Leh. So uh, an interesting trip for four weeks to a part of the Himalaya that is less popular, certainly. There are fewer climbers are aware of the opportunities in the Indian Himalaya. I think Nepal will be people's first destination and then perhaps Karakoram. But it is, it is worth bearing in mind that the, the Indian Himalaya has, has got a lot to offer. Uh, some, some good peaks like Nun and Kun, uh, without the crowds and plenty of other interesting things to see while you're in the area. So I hope that's given you a bit of an insight into uh, what's involved in climbing Noon. <laughs>